Do you live? How can you find it? Location. What is it like there? Place. Can you grow food? Build waterways? Change and be changed by the place you live? Human environment interaction. How do you get your information and move around? Movement. What things are alike and different in the people and places around you? Regions. Stay tuned and discover a new way to look at the world. Our student research team, Marquis, Kristen, David, McKenna Louise, and Eric will bring you a report on the five things of geography. You probably already know that geography is the study of the Earth's surface and the way people use it. There are five ways of looking at our Earth that really help us understand it. These are called the five themes of geography. I'll show you about the first theme, place. When geographers look at a place, they want to know what it is like there. Then, when geographers want to know where a place is, they use location to find it. I'm going to show you how places affect people, and how the people living there can affect a place. When people and places affect each other, it's called human-environment interactions. Geographers also study movement. The way people, ideas, and goods or things move from place to place. To study a place more closely, geographers sometimes divide the Earth into regions. Studying regions shows us how places are alike and how they are different from each other. So in geography, we study the Earth's surface and the way people use it. There is so much to learn when looking at place location, human environment interactions, movement, and regions. But our research team is here to help. We will bring you each of the five themes of geography. The first theme is place with David. To describe a place, we must think about what kind of features it has. Features are the things that make one place different from another place. Some places have distinct physical features. Physical features are formed by nature. Landforms, like mountains, valleys, and plains are physical features. Bodies of water, like oceans, and lakes are also physical features. Even natural resources are physical features. These are the things found in nature that people use. Climate is another physical feature. Climate is the kind of weather a place has over a long period of time. Landforms, bodies of water, natural resources, and climate are all physical features. Places can also have human features. Human features are features made by people, buildings, Highways and airports are all human features. The number of people who live in an area and what people do are also human features. These people are celebrating their culture and heritage. This is another human feature that helps to describe a place. 
Sometimes a place might have both human and physical features. Borders for states and countries are human features because they are decided by people. But borders for some countries and states follow the paths made by physical features. Look, the Mississippi River is a physical feature that acts as a border between many states. But how do we know where to find a place? McKenna Louise can answer that question with the next theme of geography, location. If we want to use direction to locate a place, we might say that it is north, south, east, or west of another place. These are cardinal directions. Let's see. Here's Kansas City. New York is east of Kansas City. And San Francisco is west of Kansas City. Out of all the states in America, the state that is farthest north and farthest west is Alaska. The farthest south is Hawaii. And the farthest east is Maine. But if we want to know exactly where to find a place, we can use numbers on a map like longitude and latitude. Imagine that the Earth has lines all over it. The lines that go from east to west are latitude lines. Each line has a number that measures how far a place is from the equator. Places on this imaginary line are located 50 degrees north of the equator. The lines that go from north to south are longitude lines. They measure how far a place is from the longitudinal line called the prime meridian. Places on this imaginary line are located 60 degrees east of the prime meridian. New Orleans is at 30 degrees north latitude and 90 degrees west longitude. This means that New Orleans is 30 degrees north of the equator and 90 degrees west of the prime meridian. We can also use numbers and street names to describe the location of a place. This house is located at 9860 Oak Ranch Place. We can even find a place by describing what is near to it or next to it. These are called landmarks. If we want to tell a friend where to find this park, you might say that it is next to the high school. The high school is a landmark for the park's location. Let's think some more about location. Do you know why so many state capitals are located in the middle of their states? Think about this. Before there were cars and airplanes, people had to ride horses, walk, or travel by wagon. Some cities became the capital of the state because they were in the middle of the state and people from all different directions could get to them more easily. Well then, why isn't Washington, D.C. located in the middle of the United States? Because when people were picking our nation's capital, this was all there was to our country. None of the area to the west of the Appalachian Mountains had become states. Now that you know exactly where a place can be found using location, how does the place affect the people living there? Kristen will tell us about the next theme of geography, human-environment interactions. The environment is everything that surrounds us, including all the places where people, plants, and animals live. Sometimes people change their environment. People may clear land to build houses or highways or even to grow food. People also help the environment by saving some land for parks, by planting trees, and by protecting wild animals. Sometimes the physical environment of a place, the things that are from nature, can affect the people who live there. Weather, mountains, and oceans are all a part of our physical environment. They can help us to decide what clothes to wear, or what homes to live in, or what kind of jobs we have, and what kind of food we eat. The physical environment of some places can also make life hard. A place might have bad weather, or storms. This can cause flooding or high winds that can knock over trees or power lines. Some places 
might be hot and dry with little water for people to drink or for farms to grow. But our physical environment also helps us by giving us things like fresh water from lakes and rivers and hills that shelter us from wind. We can certainly affect the earth and be affected by the earth. Even people moving from one place to another can affect the environment and other people. That brings us to the fourth theme of geography. Movement. Take it away, Marquis. Movement helps us understand how people, goods, and ideas get from place to place. Every day, people interact. They come in contact with one another. We talk to one another. We buy things from each other. And we play together. People also travel or move from one place to another in several different ways. We even send goods from place to place. Goods are things that are bought and sold. And we move them in airplanes, on ships, and on trains. We can also send these goods in trucks or cars. We can send ideas by using phones, or computers, and we can send ideas through newspapers, radios, and TVs. How we move and where and why we move can also affect people and the way that places grow and change. After gold was discovered in California, many people moved to the West and cities there grew. Physical features can even affect the movement of people ideas, and goods. Remember, physical features are those things that are formed by nature. Rivers are physical features that can help us move things from one place to another. But having to cross over steep mountains might make it more difficult for us to move things from place to place. It is easier to trade goods with places that are near major waterways or with places that are near railroads. That is why many of our biggest cities are located near oceans, and why states in the middle of the U.S. have a harder time trading goods with other countries. Since people, goods, and ideas cross national and state borders every day, neighboring states and countries affect each other too. Let's take a look. Mexican food is very popular in the United States. And American cars are very popular in Mexico and Canada. In southern states, there is even a popular type of food called Tex-Mex. It is a blend of American and Mexican cooking. The earth is so big, its places and people so different, how can you begin to study it all? Eric will show us the answer in the fifth theme of geography, regions. By dividing the Earth into regions, geographers organize the places on Earth into groups. These smaller parts are a lot easier to study than the entire Earth. But what exactly makes a region? A region is an area with at least one common feature that makes it different from the areas around it. All of the towns in this green area are in the Adirondack region. A common feature that makes this region different from the area around it is it is located in the Adirondack Mountains. Regions can be based on the common physical features in an area. The common features that make a place a region may include landforms, climate, or the kinds of plants that live in an area. Some places close together are called a region because they share an important natural resource, like oil. But other places are grouped together as a region because they have rich soil for growing food. Some areas have a certain type of industry or business in common that make them a region. Silicon Valley in California got its name because it is a place that is known for computer technology. And silicon is used in making computer parts. The places people live can define a region too. Urban regions include cities 
suburban regions are outside of cities, and rural regions are far away from cities. This region is defined by culture and the language that it shares. And in this region, people share a way of life. Many regions have their own history and heritage, and they may celebrate their heritage with festivals. Some regions are easy to see on a map. Regions that share a type of government, like a county or a city, have clear boundaries. St. Lawrence County in New York is next to Jefferson County. Each of these counties has its own government. Each state is its own region. Each has clear borders and its own government. States can also be grouped into larger regions that make them easier to study. The United States is divided into five regions. The Southeast, the Middle West, the Southwest, the East, and the West. These regions share similarities, like the ones we just learned about. Physical features, industries, culture, and heritage. Since regions come in all different shapes and sizes, you can be in several regions at the same time. Even your own school can be split into regions. The library is one small region of your school, and the cafeteria is another. You live in a neighborhood, a city, a county, and a state. And all of these are part of a larger region, your country, the United States. There is a lot to learn about geography, but if you study place, location, human environment interactions, movement, and regions, you'll be on your way to becoming a geography expert too. Call 1-800-483-3383 for 100% educational videos.